let's say you wanted to take some limits with absolute values in them. I have three different ones and they're all basically the same. Well, they are the same function. It's just this one I'm approaching three from the left side, this one I'm approaching three from the right side, and this one I'm approaching three from both sides. And these are all gonna be different answers because uh, I've got, well, three different ways of approaching. Uh, now I always say, just plug in the number and see what happens, but it's pretty easy to say, or pretty easy to see if you plug in three, well, I'll get three minus three over three minus, well, the absolute value of three minus three over three minus three, and that'll be the absolute value of zero over zero, and the absolute value of zero is zero. So no matter what, I'm getting zero over zero for all of these. And you know that zero over zero is indeterminate and we have to do some algebra. Now you might also think, well, I've got kind of x minus three over x minus three and anything over itself is one. And you'd be right. So that's gonna be sort of involved in our answer. Now your goal for this is you want to replace the absolute value signs with parentheses. And they'll either be regular parentheses or parentheses with a negative in front of them. Let me show you how you do that. Now you could graph the absolute value of x minus three. And you know that the absolute value of x looks like a v. The minus three will shift this to the right three. So that's what the absolute value of x minus three looks like. And so let's think about this. If I'm approaching three from the left, that's this way, I'm approaching three from the left side, then I'm going along this part of the graph. And this part of the graph is negatively sloped. So that means when I replace my absolute value signs, I'm gonna need a negative in front of them. So the absolute value of x minus three turns into a negative parentheses. Okay, and that's just because of this negatively sloped line. But if I'm approaching three from the right hand side, I'm moving along the positively sloped part. So I want my absolute value to be positive, which means for the second limit, I'm just gonna replace the absolute value sign with regular parentheses. And now I can actually cancel these things because they are in parentheses and not absolute values. So this limit, I cancel, and I have the limit as x approaches three from the left of negative one. This one I can cancel as well. I have the limit as x approaches three of a positive one. And you know that by the constant law, the limit of a constant is just that constant, which means this answer is negative one and this answer is positive one. Now, if you watch my last video on left and right hand limits, I said that if the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit, and that's the case here because negative one does not equal positive one, if the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit, then that means the two sided limit does not exist. So those are the answers for those three questions. And this makes sense if you graphed, I'm gonna graph the absolute value of x minus three over x minus three. If you had a graphing calculator, which you probably wouldn't be allowed to use in a, a calculus class, but if you did have one, or if you just wanted to graph it for fun, your calculator or your computer um, this is negative one, would spit this out. This is the graph of absolute value of x minus three over x minus three. 
So this sort of makes sense. If I'm approaching x equals 3 from the left, I'm negative 1. And if I'm approaching 3 from the right, I'm positive 1. But if I approach from both sides simultaneously, I end up at two different points, which means the limit does not exist. So that's all you need to know when you're doing limits with absolute value. All you have to do is replace the absolute value sign with either parentheses or negative parentheses, depending on which side you're coming from. Thanks for watching.